Hello, Hallie with Handmade by Hallie here. Welcome to my next video. We're going to need an evergreen base that's 24 inches round, scissors and wire cutters, a bow maker of your choice. We're going to use tulips, some crocus that are very similar to the tulips, some filler greens. I chose some eucalyptus and some filler white and I chose baby's breath. And these are the ribbons we're going to use. So there's the tag. I at least paid 50% off of this base, probably less than the almost $20 that was the original price. Anyway, you're going to fluff your base make all the branches stand out. There were some kind of plasticky branches in there that I just cut out. There are some longer, thicker branches that I kind of bend the wire to make them kind of blend in with everything else. Other than that, we'll be ready to go with the next part of preparation for this wreath. Next, we're going to take our tulips that I got from Walmart, and I'm going to use nine bushes of these tulips. And I like these because you can push up the leaves and leave about two inches of the stem long. And the same thing with, with these crocus bush. Push the leaves up and cut off, leaving about two inches of the stem below. If you cut your stems the proper length now, you won't have to trim them as you are going through putting this together. Next, we are going to get our filler greens and baby's breath. And I chose eucalyptus. I also got these from Walmart and I used four of these. Oh, sorry. Um, the crocus I used four, the eucalyptus I used six, and the baby's breath I used four. And I like bushes like this that you can pull it apart and cut it into pieces. And I like the way that the color and the variation of shape goes with the tulips. And then I rearrange some of the leaves and a little bit of white so you can see them. Um, sometimes I'm cutting off the little nubs where I take off the extra leaves. And then this one's pretty easy because they're kind of glued together in the middle. You just cut all, cut that the length that it will allow you. And you kind of have to pull these apart and going through that process you do pull some of those stems off and they're pretty easy to put back on. But get these all prepped and then we're ready to roll. So now I have my baskets on my table with the tulips and crocus. All I have to do is make sure that my stems to my flowers are the about two inches long. So I'll adjust that and then dip the end of the stem into my glue pot that's off to my left hand side. And we will go around and mix the different stems of tulips and crocus. And I will end up using, again, the tulips. I use a total of nine bushes, all of the stems. And the crocus, I end up using four bushes. The crocus bushes seem to have a little bit more on them so that's why I didn't have to use as many. You can see as I'm putting them in there they actually have some nice greens and a little bit of filler flower and all together with the greens that I have and a little bit of baby's breath I end up really liking this project. So we're just going to keep going around. I think I do end up going around the wreath two or three different times. Uh, once the initial time with the tulips and crocus, and another time 
with the filler green and baby's breath and then another time just to fill in any extra spots. I do like this method. Um, it's pretty easy, a little bit easier than some of the other methods that I've done. And it's pretty fun. And I really like the way it turned out. So here I am just filling in the last of the tulips and crocus. And if you are enjoying this project, if you wouldn't mind doing those usual things with uh, smashing the like button, doing the subscribe, and uh, even sharing my video with a friend or two. Uh, it really helps my page grow and lets YouTube know that you want to see more of my content. Thank you so much for watching. So here I have all of my tulips and crocus in and I am going in and putting the eucalyptus and the baby's breath in, kind of alternating and spreading things out, filling in gaps. And yes, the tulips do tend to fall off. That's kind of a normal thing with these uh, florals but this process takes a few minutes and sorry you get to see the top of my head again I'm trying to make sure that I'm filling all the way around from the inside and all the way around to the where it's sitting on the table so that's why you see me lift it up and make sure I'm getting the baby's breath and the eucalyptus all the way at the bottom of it because you want to think about when the wreath hangs on someone's wall or door you want to be able to have all of the surface covered and not leaving anything open so as i continue to do this i'm liking this project more and more and again using the evergreen base just makes it easy just to put things where I need to put it. I don't have to worry about zip ties or U-pins or wrapping with ribbon or wire. And I think this is my favorite way to do it now. You have to let me know what you think. So we're just gonna cut some more eucalyptus you never know how much you're going to use. Sometimes I don't cut it all just in case, but I am liking this eucalyptus in my spring projects and probably my sum summer projects too. So we'll get everything ready and continue on with filling this tulip and crocus wreath. So I have gone through and put all of the eucalyptus in, all, most of the baby's breath in, and all of the tulips and all of the crocus that I have cut, and it comes out really nice and really full. Next, I'm gonna make a bow, and I'm gonna use my Deluxe Easy Bow Maker, and I'm going to start with this gray and white little bit glittery and we're gonna make our bottom loops six inches long making sure to put my ribbon through the pegs and twisting it on the other side and I do three loops on each side and then match the tails in the length and then I'm gonna go on to a couple of one and a half inch ribbons I'm going to use, after I dovetail my ends, I'm going to use this really pretty purple with white sparkle polka dots. And this one's kind of fun. I don't know if you can tell in the video, the edges are fuzzy. So it kind of feels soft on your hands making this one. So with this purple and white, I did three 
loops on each side, cutting my tails. And going on to the next one, and I decide, no, I want to do my white next instead of my other one. So I put the white in, repeating the process. Bows can be tricky with making sure that your length of your ribbons, your loops are the same. But just take your time. While you're doing it, then I put this last ribbon on and I make sure to dovetail all my signs, assigns all my ends. And then I'm going to use a zip tie to close it together. And then I'm going to put a pipe cleaner behind my bow to put it through. And then I use a couple pieces of white, um, small pieces of white pipe cleaner. I twist those together to cover the pipe cleaner. You can use whatever you want or not cover. In the end, you really don't even end up seeing uh, that zip tie. Then I just need to find my spot that I intentionally left without some of the filler. And I found the spot here. And I'm going to put my pipe cleaners through. And there's really only two rings on this form. So I'm going around the top ring and going over to the back and twisting that and then I'm going to cut off the excess and now I'm going to go through and cut off any of the stems that are poking through that could possibly scratch a customer's door But hopefully not cutting enough off that the um, flower stem doesn't stay in. So we're just going to go around and do that. Kind of fix a couple things as we go. There's really not too many long stems but just a few. And I don't mind doing this while I've got it turned upside down because if I turn it right side up and fluff my bow and then turn it right back upside down, then I'll smash it again. So may as well just fluff it all at once. So we're going to fluff our bow, get everything arranged the way we want it. Then I'll hang it up and fix the tails. And here we have our finished project. And here's the pretty bow and a couple different views. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.